Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to return to a brewery that has featured on the channel a good number of times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years, lots of different styles, but they are known mainly for their New England hazy, whatever you want to call them, IPAs. It's another one of those that we're going to have a look at today and this is the latest instalment from one of my favourite series of beers that they do. So looking forward to this one and I hope that you guys enjoy enjoy my take on this beer as well. So um, yeah, for this review then, we are going to head up towards Gothenburg once again, Jutebor as you would say in Swedish, the Swedish craft beer capital up there on the west coast. Got to get that Gothenburg catchphrase in for the Gothenburg beers because it is just channel tradition and all that jazz. But for this review, we are going to return to OO Brewing once again. So this is the latest release from their 100 series, their single hopped New England IPA series. It's called the 100 Chinook this time, 6.5%, and as always, a New England hazy IPA, as I said a second ago. But um, yeah, this beer was released as part of the Local Osmoskalig Assortment through Systembolaget here in Sweden for April of 2021. The exact release date this time was the 6th of April, which is a little bit later in, than normal. And they also released the 5050 Citra Mosaic this time, I think. So yeah, that's a combination we've had many a time before, but this is the one that I was most excited about. The thing that I love about the 100 series, you know, single hopped, you can learn a lot about different parts of the hop if you like. You know, we've had the 100 Citra, we've had we've had um, Idaho 7, we've had Nelson Sovin, we've had Amarillo, there's been a couple of others as well and the names of those aren't coming to me at the moment. But Chinook is a really interesting hop because I know you can use this as an aroma hop but I don't think I've ever had a single hopped um, Chinook IPA before. So um, yeah, I think this could be very, very interesting because whenever I'm asked about Chinook, I always think of like a big, strong grapefruity, piney resinous hop. Um, so I'm curious to see how it turns out in the um, aroma side of things. So remember, when you add hops early on during the wort boil, that is when you get most bitterness out of them. But if you add them on later on in the wort boil, that's when you get more kind of flavour and aroma and things from them. And as I say, Chinook for me is usually um, is usually a more bittering hop, if you like, rather than an aroma hop. So very, very curious to see how it comes out. And this one, I've learned a lot about different hops from this 100 series. For example, the big bitterness that you get from Nelson Sovin, for example, that really strong zestiness that you can get from, uh, from Amarillo, whereas before I always thought it was a big oily orange. So um, yeah, hopefully this one makes for another really interesting review. I'm very curious to see what secrets Chinook has to offer us. So uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy this one as well. Hopefully it's another good beer and we'll see how we get on with this one. So let's go for it. As always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from OO Brewing before, and you will no doubt see more added to that list in the fairly near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you happen to be interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about OO Brewing then, on to my brewery notes. So, as I've mentioned to you already, OO Brewing are based in Gothenburg, Jutebori, up there in the Swedish west coast, and the company was founded back in 2011 by Olaf and Ole Andersson, hence the name OO. And these guys were childhood friends, but for many years they were also avid home brewers. But the pair have always been very interested in beers from a young age and uh, Ole apparently had been heavily involved in the craft beer scene in Gothenburg since pre-drinking age. He was the original head brewer at Stieg Beiets Brewery and this is where the original OO brewing beers were produced. So he was actually the developer of the likes of the GBG Beer Week Beer 2016, the Amazing Haze and also the OO Narangi as well actually. And all three of those I would consider kind of cult classic Swedish New England IPAs. If you get the chance to try those, I highly, highly recommend that you do. Those are the beers that really kicked off the whole uh, New England IPA 
sort of uh, fan, if you like, in Sweden, along with the new Sweden IPA from Opie Gorse Brewery. Um, but while Ole is doing the brewing, Olaf manages the business side of the brewery. He used to work at a marketing firm in Copenhagen, from what I understand, but he is now 100% at the brewery from what I understand uh, but apparently these guys just like to make beers that they would love to drink themselves and they do it very well but in April of 2017 Ole left Stieg Berriot's brewery and then fully invested his time with OO Brewing and they invested in a new brewery in Hiesingen near the Tingstead Bridge in the city and it's equipped with a 2000 litre brewing system which means they have the capacity to brew up to 500,000 litres of beer per year. In the first year in this new brewery they produced around 100,000 litres and they're basically planning to expand up to capacity over the next few years and in 2019 they brewed around 300,000 litres. I couldn't find a figure for 2020 but I'm assuming they either would have stayed roughly about the same because of the pandemic or they might have increased it a little bit but um, as of uh, April 2021 when I'm uh, filming this review for you, these guys have produced around 75 different kinds of beer and that number is always, always increasing. So, um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about OO Brewing for the moment, although I do feel that I might need to kind of rewrite these notes and research them because we've been using these ones for a little while actually. So I'll try and uh, update those for the next one for the 50-50 Citra Mosaic. But um, yeah, I think that gives you a nice kind of brief overview of uh, what OO Brewing are all about. But uh, yeah, if you want to learn more about them, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer, Beer Advocate and Untapped pages to learn more about all the different beers that they've done. So um, yeah, let's get on and have a little look at this beer itself then. So quick look at the artwork before we open up the can. As you can see, this is typical for what you would expect of, um, of OO Brewing. Uh, you always get this kind of very simple thing with the 100 series. There you can see the kind of name side of the beer, OO Brewing 100 Chinook, 6.5%, 440 milliliter can. I actually think the can is different there because OO Brewing, their cans never used to be shiny like this. And I think the top was a different color, if I remember rightly as well, come to think of it. So um, yeah, I think they've maybe got a new can supplier, but correct me on that if I'm wrong. This These cans actually look very similar to the ones that um, from Arna, use come to think of it. So maybe using the same supplier now, I don't know. But yeah, 440 milliliter can this one. Um, this cost me 45 Swedish kroner, so just a little touch over four pounds sterling, um, about four euros 50, and then somewhere in the region of five dollars 50 American for those of you watching in different places. So good price for a 6.5% IPA, I think. 100% uh, Chinook hopped, hence the name 100 Chinook. So um, yeah, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. So as I was mentioning earlier, for me, Chinook is always a big piney resinous bitter hop. Um, usually some strong grapefruit in there. Um, and I think, you know, if it's used in conjunction with uh, a bit of Columbus, as it often is, or a bit of Cascade, especially in black IPAs, actually, Chinook and Cascade is a beautiful combination for black IPAs. Then it can be very, very interesting. So, um, yeah, we've got about 80% of the beer, I think, in the, the glass just now. Let me just realign this for my OCD. And there we go. So, uh, yeah, I'm really curious to see how it turns out in this one. Um, Chinook is, it can be between about 12 and 16% alpha acid from what I understand. It depends on the batch and the particular flower and so on like that. But yeah, 12 to uh, 12 to 16% alpha acid. So it is a bit of a bitter beast, this one. American hop, of course, like I say, pine resins and a kind of good dark grapefruity character normally. So yeah, we'll see how it turns out. Cause like I say, you get different characteristics out of these beers depending on uh, when during the warp boil you add the hops. Earlier on you're going to get more bitterness and things and the more floral and green components of the beer but if you add them later on you're going to get the more fruity components of the beer coming to the fore of course. But yeah as you can see and as you would expect from a New England IPA this one has poured a lovely I would say fairly rich yellow that's kind of a mango juice colour. I always like comparing the New England IPAs to different fruit juices for their appearances because that's just what they remind me of and you can see that the head on this one when it poured was just under uh, a finger and I would say it's a big frothy kind of cream coloured head actually so um, yeah it looks very very nice one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there and overall it looks really nice good level of haze to this one it's always difficult to try and remember whether this one's hazier than some of the other ones that I've had but um, it certainly looks 
pretty good in terms of its haze level for a 6.5 percenter. Remember, the level of haze that you get in these New England hazy IPAs depends on the wheat and the oats, and I guess the yeast also plays a role there, and the overall colour of the beer of the beer depends, one, on the type of malts that you use, and two, the length of your water boil. The longer you boil the water, the more the sugar is caramelised, thus you get a darker beer. But, um, yeah. It depends in the first instance on the type of malts that you use. So yeah, nothing out of the realms of possibility when it comes to this beer in terms of its appearance when you consider what style it is. It looks pretty nice, I have to say. So um, yeah, I think this one it should be pretty nice. So let's take a closer look at the aroma then and see how we get on with this one. I'm very curious about this beer. Hmm, now that is interesting. So when you open up the can, I was almost getting some kind of um, I was almost getting like some kind of big orangey notes out of it, which I was a bit surprised about. So um, yeah, the beer itself, I think, um, it's really um, I'm not getting too much actually from the aroma. In this case, it's really interesting. Um, it's actually, yeah, kind of curious as to what to make of that, to be honest with you. Um, let's see if we waft it. Yeah, you can hear the dogs going crazy because somebody's coming home as well. But yeah, um, yeah, I'm starting to get a little bit more out of it now, I have to say. But yeah, the... Um, This is a really, it's it, it's really interesting, this one. We'll start off with the malt base because I'm getting a good little bit out of the malt base in this one. So, um, yeah, for me, the the malty side of things is um, is kind of typical of this one. For me, I get a lot of um, kind of bready character out of this one. So there's a good bit of a barley malt presence in there. And remember, as I've said to you before, you can take New England IPAs in a few different directions. They can be, you know, yeasty and farmhousey. They can be barley malt leaning and, and bready. They can be oaty and creamy wheaty and bitey and a little bit kind of you know rye and grainy and they can also be a little bit brown sugary as well but yeah in this case you know when you sugar it up a bit more the beer really does start to show more of itself so and then um, in this sense we can say the beer it's got a nice kind of I'm, I'm getting a good little bit of a kind of white bready base out of this one a good little bit of bread crust um I'm getting more, I'm getting a good oatiness out of this as well. The oats are starting to show that sort of almost powdery, creamy kind of thing too, which is interesting. So I'm getting a good little bit of that out of this beer. But at the same time, when I take the aroma in a little bit more deeply, I'm getting some kind of wheaty elements out of it. There's a tiny little hint of that, you know, Werther's original kind of uh, butter candy type thing out of this one. But I'd say this beer, it really leans more towards the bready, the kind of white bready, barley malt leaning and kind of oaty side of things so um yeah the the aroma out of this beer i think is um is quite interesting on the malty side of things this one strikes me as being a little bit more bready than some of the other ones that i've had in this 100 series before but i can gradually get more and more of the fruity side of this beer coming out actually and it's starting to build in pungency as well i think my nose maybe just needed a bit of time to adjust to what was going on with this one but yeah the malty side of things is kind of what you'd expect a little bit of wheaty bitiness a good bit of oaty kind of creaminess and smoothness and powderiness a little bit of werther's original kind of thing and a bit of a bready backbone but the green components in this um, are interesting too so um straight away with this beer you have to take it in quite deeply to get the green components so yeah it actually comes across <clears throat> and it might well be to do with the intensity remember a new england ipa depends more on late edition hops than early edition hops. But to me, I'm surprised, because um, as I say, Chinook for me is always big and piney resinous, but it actually comes across as quite mellow and floral in this um, as the, in this beer. So yeah, that's really interesting. There's, a, there's definitely a bit of earthiness to this one. I've always found that you get a little bit of earthiness out of, um, out of Chinook. Um, but it's interesting because when you take it in a bit more deeply, you really get the big piney resins out of it. But this is also showing me a good floral component too, which is really interesting. So you get the big piney resinous notes that almost saturate your nose a little bit, which is really interesting. But you also get um, 
a nice floral component too. And this is why I love this series because it's, it's you know, if you're an ingredients nerd like me, it's so educational for teaching you about the different hops and then you can pick up different subtleties of things in other beers that you try later. So yeah, the big piney resin notes coming out of this one, but also a good floral component there, which is uh, which is really interesting. There's a good bit of a kind of grassy zestiness out of this one. You know, the Chinook here is really showing a, quite a powerful citrusy note for me on the grassy side of things too, which is very, very interesting. So um, yeah, I like how, um, how this beer goes about its business in that regard, actually. Um, it's nice. And the thing as well that's getting me, I think we've covered the green component there. Like I say, bit of earthiness, nice bright floral quality out of it, a good deep piney resin, you know, but also a good little bit of a citrusy um, zesty quality as well. So I really like how um, how that goes together in this beer for sure. Um, so yeah, the... Um, the um, the fruity side of this though is really interesting. It's so oily. Didn't expect that. Um, so yeah, for me it's really interesting because I'm actually getting quite a bit of or uh, quite a bit of an orangey note out of this on its own as well. So yeah, definitely some really strong grapefruity elements in there. But it's showing it is really showing a bit of an orangey component too, which I think is um, is very interesting. And I had a black IPA. I reviewed a black IPA actually um, a day or two ago. And I found that it had a really orangey note in it. And that's it's interesting that I pick up a bit of orange in this because it's exactly the same aroma that I got in that black IPA. So maybe the black IPA I reviewed the other day didn't have Amarillo in it like I thought. But you are getting, for me, there is a good little bit of an orangey quality coming out of Chinook here as well, which is really interesting. Never would have thought that. Strong grapefruit, definitely. But also a really nice big kind of um, orangey component too, which I never would have thought but definitely a nice kind of big citrusy zestiness to the to the grass um to the grassy side of the beer so yeah there's, there's a few interesting things as i say the thing that's really striking me about chinook nice big floral component and then a big oily orangey thing wouldn't have thought of that i have to say so um yeah definitely take a little bit of time to ponder over this aroma before you get stuck into the beer you're always going to learn new things about hops that way especially in this series but let's have a look at this one and see how we get on. Very curious. So this one is the 100 Chinook IPA, 6.5%, New England, hazy, whatever you want to call it, IPA, as always from the 100 series at OO Brewing. Let's get stuck into this. Slanja, Skull, cheers. Oh, yeah. That is interesting, actually, for sure. I'm definitely getting that big oily note that I picked up, that big oily fruity note that I picked up in the aroma. That definitely translates into the flavour. But yeah, this is definitely... A this beer, when it mellows out, it's definitely a little bit more bitter and bitey and things compared to some of the other ones we've had in recent times. And yeah, you're really getting that big piney resinous character out of this beer. It takes a little while to build, but absolutely, this has got a hell of a bitter kick to it, this one, compared to um, some of the other ones we've had in this series before. So yeah, it's interesting. The, 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 the flavour of this beer is exactly what I would expect bar the fruity oiliness from Chinook. So that's the thing that's getting me about this beer. The aroma of the Chinook on its own is fairly different, but the flavour is pretty much what I would expect, apart from that kind of the, the slight oiliness to the to the fruit. So um, yeah, you get a lot of piney resinous character in this beer. The further that you go into it, that's craziness. I really like that for sure. Yeah, fruity side of this beer is nice though. But let's try and break this one down. Then this is this is definitely one of the more bitter offerings I've had from the 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 O one hundred series, definitely. But um, yeah, straight away across the um, straight away across the middle of the palate with this one, you're getting that kind of bready 
uh, base. It's quite a grainy bready base I get in this one, but that could well just be because of the bitterness we're getting from the Chinook in this beer. But um, yeah, so straight away across the middle of your palate, nice grainy white bready base there. That goes right across the middle of your tongue. On top of that, you can feel a little bit of, um, you can definitely feel the oats coming out a little bit more. The bready base in this beer doesn't feel overly thick, if that makes sense, compared to some of the other ones. But again, I think the piney resinous notes from the Chinook in this are really starting to dominate the flavour, actually. So, in a way, I can see why it's not that common to use Chinook in a single hop um, IPA. So, yeah, I mean, that, that's one of the things that the piney resinous note in this, pardon me, is almost a little bit overpowering, actually. So, yeah, that's, and, and to be honest, that's one of the things you're going to get from this beer. It does come across as a little bit maybe unbalanced in some ways compared to other offerings in the 100 series like the 100 Citra or the Nelson Soviet and things like that. But that, I think, is just the nature of the hop. I don't think that's anything that OO have done. I think there's a reason Chinook is normally used as a bittering hop. And I was I was coming into this one open-minded to say, all right, OK, you know, maybe it can be an aroma hop as well. But I can see why it's definitely more used as a bittering hop rather than, uh, than an aroma hop on the basis of this beer. So, yeah, just th this one, in a sense... It does, I think, come across as just a little bit unbalanced, but that's the hop. It's not OO brewing and anything they've done. And I would add to that as well. It's the way that it develops in the flavour, actually, but quite quickly, the transition with this beer, when you take it in, it's really nice and oily and smooth and stuff, but then very quickly, now you've seen how long it was since I took a sip of this beer, now you're starting to get these very powerful um, you're starting to get these very powerful piney resonance notes just taking over everything. Um, so yeah, but yeah, let's let's start again from the first set. Let, let's start again from the sip. So yeah, when you take the beer in, middle third of your palate, you've got that lovely smooth white bready sort of thing in there. On top of that, you can feel a little bit of the wheat kind of coming, out, coming in there as well and then as you go down the middle line of your palate on that middle third of your tongue you can feel the nice smoothness of the oats there and in the very centre of your palate on top of that you get a little bit of that Werther's original kind of um, butter candy sort of thing there and in fairness some of that does linger into the aftertaste but it really feels as if the kind of pine resins from the Chinook are creeping their way into the middle of the palate and just making the beer feel more and more bitter and it does almost give you the impression of it being kind of more um, grainy and things like that when it's not really but um, yeah I think that covers the middle third of the palette in this beer to be honest with you it's quite typical of what we had in the series before but yeah back third of the palette then so always say in that border region between middle third and back third of your palette you can feel a little bit of a sort of bready build up there it's got a little bit of a kind of doughy um, yeasty kind of thing to it, a little bit of a bread crusty element to it, which I really like. Um, but yeah, on the back third of your palate, um, you can feel there is a little bit of a wheaty bitiness just underneath that, which is which is quite nice. So the wheat becomes a little bit more prominent on that back third of your palate. On top of that, you can feel some of the sort of more airy yeasty flavours just sitting there. So as you start from the back of the palate, um, you can feel the flavours like this, the flavours like that as you go forward. And... Um, you know, it's like this and you can feel it gradually just condensing down and then as you reach the middle third of your palate, if you reach that border region, it goes like this. Then the middle third of your palate seems, you know, a little bit kind of, it seems a lot more condensed than the back third of your palate. But again, it's, you have to be quite quick and quite um, sort of sensitive with your palate to pick up what's going on here because the, the bitterness in this beer is really just powerful. I'm not sure if they've actually brewed this one with the intention of it being a higher IBU um, New England IP, but it certainly comes across that way. It certainly does come across that way. So, um, yeah, I like that about this. For I, I like, I, in a sense, I do like it because it's, it's slightly different from the other ones we've had before, but it is just a little bit overpowering. It is just, as I say, this beer doesn't come across as the most balanced one that I've had in this series for sure. But yeah, 
on the hoppy side of things then back corners of the palette you've got a nice little bit of earthiness there you know you would expect that from Chinook it's always going to give you that but as soon as you move further forward from that it really becomes big and piney resin it's just on the edge of your palette and that lasts all the way until you go to the front corners of your palette it's very powerful it's very um kind of dominates and you can feel it sort of just creeping its way into the middle of the palette there this beer i think does have a good little bit of kick to it but it's funny because when you reach the front corners of the palette and as you go around the front curve of the tongue there's it becomes a little bit lighter and sort of grassy but in the same way the grassiness almost has a little bit of a kind of menthol-y sort of zing to it which is is quite unusual um it's almost a little bit minty in a sense as well which um which is quite funny so yeah there's quite a bit of that going on with the beer the green component in this is very very interesting but i think trying this trying this beer in a single hop ipa just looking at the green component of this beer it shows you why this is normally a bittering hop rather than an aroma hop in my humble opinion um i think it's quite obvious why you would use this as a bittering hop rather than a fully fledged um aroma hop if you like it's just the 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 the, the so the, the alpha acids in this just seem extremely powerful compared to other things and it's strange as well when you think about it because you know nelson sovine is actually higher in alpha acid than chinook but it just doesn't have the same kind of pungency so maybe there's something with the the mercy oils or whatever's going on in this one um so it's it's really interesting as i say this is why i like this series of beer because it really shows you it really gives you a bit of an education about what's going on with them um, pardon me different um hops and things like this so yeah this one firmly cements in my mind that should look bittering hop not aroma hop <laughs> so um yeah interesting for sure but um yeah on the the fruity side of things then so let's focus on that as i always say, say with that borderline between um front third of your palate and middle third of your palate again you get a little bit of that kind of ready build up there's a little bit of a bread crusty element coming out of it for sure then on the base of that um on the base of that front third of your palate there's definitely a little bit of a kind of smoother and um, there's a wee touch of a smoother um kind of white bready note underneath that so yeah and on top of that that's where you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters roll their way out of the beer at the back of the front third of your palate um it's definitely got a strong powerful kind of grapefruity note to it absolutely So, um, yeah, it's definitely got a bit of that stronger grapefruity note to it. As you move further forward, it really mellows out a little bit and develops this slightly figgy, kind of orangey type vibe. You know, it, it really, it, it kind of shows me this, that the Chinook has a lovely oily component to it. And as I said, you get that a lot when you take the beer in at the beginning. You do get a nice kind of oily, fruity component out of this beer. But yeah, on the front half of the of that front third of your tongue definitely more orangey there's a wee bit of a kind of figgy component underneath it as well so yeah that's one of the things i didn't realize about chinook it does have a wee orangey component to it and this is going to make me think a little bit about some of the black ipas that i try because chinook is a lovely hop to have in the black ipas and i think with that stronger bitterness that it seems to have i think that will form a good balance with the um with you know the, the the kind of black malty or carafa side of a black ipa so yeah food for thought definitely when um, with this beer in my opinion but i think we can leave the tasting section at that for this so yeah grapefruit a little bit of a kind of figgy component as you move further forward from that back part of the front third of your tongue and then it gets a bit more orangey and oily on the front part so um yeah i like how that um how that goes together in this one so an interesting beer this but as i say not the most balanced in the 100 series for me but yeah let's round off the review with the mouthfeel then um hmm. so yeah on the mouthfeel i would say mid-bodied smooth carbonation this beer does have a good little bit of a kind of more oily and wet component to it compared to some of the other ones that i remember in the 100 series so um yeah i like it in that sense i do like that that part of the mouth feels a slightly more oily new england ipa in my mind but still you know very smooth and it comes across it comes across really quite clean but the bitterness in this one for me is definitely higher this beer's got to be about 60 or 70 ibus it's got to be in that 
uh, in that kind of category. I don't know whether they've done more early edition hopping to this one or whether it's just the sheer nature of the um, of the alpha acid and beta acids and stuff like this in the Chinook hop. But um, yeah, this one comes across as a lot more bitter compared to others. 70, 60, 70 IBUs. I would not be surprised if that's the IBU count in this one. The malt base, as I say, is quite it's what you'd expect quite smooth nice little bit of breadiness and a wee touch of sweetness but as you move you can really feel that the bitterness the sheer power of the pine resins really encroaches on that throughout the beer and then you've got a nice um slightly oily fruity component out of this one as well which is uh, that's the surprising thing for me about chinook is the slightly orangey note that it has and the oiliness of the fruit i think it shows you you know chinook does have the fruity component to be an aroma hop but i think the power the, the sheer power of the the piney raisins in this maybe kind of overdo it but it could you know on reflection when i think about what i've said earlier it could well be they've put just a little bit too much in the in the early edition stages with this beer it could well be that but um yeah another interesting beer these things the, these 100 series beers from O always teach you something and that's why i enjoy reviewing them so um yeah let's leave it at that for this one this one was the 100 chinook 6.5 percent New England Hazy IPA, whatever you want to call it, from OO Brewing, one of my favourite series of beers that OO Brewing do, and this has given me a few things to think about with the Chinook Hop going forward, so hopefully that helps me do better reviews of some black IPAs and, uh, and other things as well. But yeah, thank you again for watching my reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this one in the comment section below. Let me know what your own thoughts are on the Chinook Hop as well. Let me know whether you think it's a better bittering or aroma hop or whatever but thank you again for watching check out my social media check out OO Brewing and we'll catch you guys very soon slange it school cheers and see you in the next review